not doing nothing yet. That's just, you know, making a little noise. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? Welcome to RCBC, Redemption Community Biker Church. We're all here to worship in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hey, I'd like to open up a prayer, please. Dear Lord, we ask you to forgive us for everything that we've done that we know about and everything we've done that we don't know about. And Lord, we want to thank you for all the blessings you've done that we know about and we don't know about. We ask you to be with us tonight, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit down and ignite Bobby so you know Bobby's message gets on and it's talking all your hearts so you, you'll hear the message. It was all in the name of Jesus. That's what we're here for. We want all the praise to go there. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm about a minute early, so I'm going to give a few seconds to see if anybody wants to come in. I can't see. There's all these silly lights shining up. Hey, I can I can do that. This little light of mine, I'm all about it shine. Yeah, this little light of mine, I'm all about it shine. This little light of mine, I'm all about it shine. But it shine, but it shine, but it shine. You hide under a bush and no, go let it shine. You hide under a bush and no, go let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, Lord. I'm on let it shine. Jesus gave it to me now. I'm on let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, Lord. All here at the church house, we need to let it shine. All here at this church house, we gotta need to shine. All us at this church house, we gotta let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Damn and cloudy, we need to let it shine. Dale and cloudy, they need to let it shine. Dale and cloudy, they need to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of ours, we need to let it shine. This little light of ours, we need to let it shine. This little light of ours, we need to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Yeah. Come on, Bobby. Here's the announcement, dude. Announcement. All right. Let's see here. What's up, RCBC? I don't have my microphone, so I'm, I'm a little off balance right now. So just, just work with me, all right? Work with me. So I do have some announcements because I am the world-famous announcer guy. I, I swear I did a rehearsal earlier, and it worked wonderful. Abs, can you hit that slide for me? We have a technical it Might be asleep. What's going on? Oh, there we go. I got it. All right. So now that I have my slides there, I think RCBC needs to order some RCBC sweatshirts, man. For, yeah. For, for yes, the, yes, yes, yes. For, for all six <laughs> days of winter in the state of uh, Florida, right? But, man, it got a little cold out there, man. Jeez, Louise, man, just a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about ordering, like, baby doll T-shirts for the ladies and, you know, muscle shirts. And, 
Now we're talking about sweatshirts. So, whoo, true Floridian, man. I, I've turned into a true Floridian. So, yeah. All right. So, hey, um, tomorrow we have the bait meeting. Not sure if you know anything about a bait, but a bait stands for, it used to stand for uh, American Bikers Against Totalitarian Totalitarian enactments, right? And then over time, just like everything else, it kind of watered down, softened it, and it kind of got rebranded with American bikers aimed towards education. But And, and they do. They educate the, the general community. They do a lot of safety initiatives, but they also still work um, up in Tallahassee. Uh, they look over uh, different things that influence the biker community. And at the Eagles Lodge on Nova, they have breakfast. I think the breakfast starts at nine. I think yeah, I think it's eight thirty, nine o'clock. Mark, yeah. is that? It's, yeah. it's like nine. it's like nine o'clock, uh, and then the meeting starts at eleven, and it usually goes a little bit after twelve. It's a pretty cool spot. You know, the breakfast is good. It's cheap. Um, you get some information. You get plugged in. Get to you know socialize and and all that other stuff in person, and um, stay in tune with what's happening in the biker community. So, anyways. That meeting happens every first Sunday of the month, so if you get a chance, go there. Chances are you'll run into me and Big Jim and maybe some other familiar faces. So, checkity check on that. Iron Horse will be next Sunday. Uh, no, next Sunday will be yes. the Ross Myers. That'll be Ross Myers. And then, so Ross Myers swap meet next week. So there's this organization called Combat uh, Vets Association, and... Not sure if you know this, but when they do the swap meet, every vendor that's out there, I think they pay 10 bucks for, for their vendor spot, and that money that's collected goes to a specific organization, kind of like what we do with the pancake breakfast. Well, next weekend's out to support the combat vets, uh, not combat vets, um, the combat vets association. So anyways, that's what's happening. And then the week after that, of course, we have the Iron Horse. We have church on the fourth Sunday of the month, and speaking of that, I'll, talk, I'll get back to that in a minute. Wednesday, every Wednesday, Miss Helen hosts a woman's Bible study here. Uh, I think we had seven people here on Wednesday, this past Wednesday. Thursday, we have just a regular Bible study, and uh, that, that too starts at seven o'clock, so if you want to come in and get your batteries recharged, come on in and do it, man, because again, and I say it all the time, is, you know, Thir Wednesday, Thursday, you know, Wednesday hump day, you're over that, that hump of the week, and then you're coming in, and, and if you're anything like me, by the time Thursday comes around, my patience is thin, especially dealing with some of the people I got to deal with throughout the week, right? And, you know, to be able to come in on Thursday evening and get your spiritual batteries recharged and, and, and sharpen that, that, you know, spiritual sword that you have to get you... Um, <laughs> through Friday without choking anyone out is a good thing, right? And then you come in on Saturday and, and do church, right? So anyways, uh, we do have the Bible study. Let's talk about the potluck, man. So November 20th, we are going to do our annual Thanksgiving potluck, right? So it's going to be here. Um, we have volunteers. If you want to volunteer and help, you can come here at 11. Um, 12 o'clock is, is show time. Uh, if you, if, as you bring food in, we'll have tables set up. You can just set it down. We'll have it organized or Helen will have it organized desserts and, you know, uh, main meal and salads and all that stuff. They always do a, a really, really good job. So anyways, 12 o'clock we'll pray 12 to three we'll eat. You know, if you want to hang out and fellowship and help clean up, that's cool too. And then, uh, we'll have our regular church, uh, at 6:30. The sign-up sheet is back there near Maria, near the hot dog um, cooker. So if you want to bring one of your legendary whatever, green bean casserole seems to be like a, a crowd pleaser, right? So if you want to bring your legendary potluck meal, go back there, sign up, and, and you have a, a place and assignment on November 20th, okay? If you have any questions, ask Miss Helens because she'll plug you in for sure. All right. Finally. Pancake fundraiser, all right? So, again, every fourth Sunday of the month, except October, because we're absolutely smoked because of Biketoberfest and a couple other things, 
is we do our, our fundraiser breakfast, right? Um, where's Miss Chris? She's heavily engaged in the veterans community, right? And we were talking to Chris, and, and she had mentioned that the wreaths across America has a, a mission location right here in our own town, and it's the Volusia Memorial Gardens right there on Nova. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what we were talking about. And um, so that'll happen on December 18th, and we're going to look for volunteers to do that as well, to go out there and place wreaths on the veterans uh, tombstones, right? That's pretty cool. However, what we want to do in, in preparation for this is we want to do a fundraiser, right? So it's like, what, what better way to do it than with the pancake breakfast and uh, get the community plugged in, raise a little bit of money, because uh, how many wreaths are they doing? 2,000 wreaths this year. So that, that's a pretty tall order, right? So, you know, if RCBC can help sow into that, so be it, man. That's what we're about, helping the community do cool stuff, right? So um, anyways, put that on your calendar. It's on Facebook. And uh, do me a solid, man. Go to Facebook, like it, and share it, and help get the word out, okay? That would be really good. And uh, Big Jim, I think that's really about it for my announcements. Yeah, thank so, you, Lono. I'm going to leave that up there in case you all want to take a picture. If you're not on Facebook, whatever, you can take it. But I'm going to leave it up there, and I'm going to pitch back over to Big Jim. With that said, do me solid, though. Look to your left, right, front, and back, and give a howdy and a handshake. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Redemption Community Biker Church. <laughs> Woo! Glad you're here. Glad you're here, man. Hey, everybody. I'd like to say it's time to uh, introduce some people that, that stop by. Kim and Lisa, we Welcome you to RCBC to come to the Ladies Bible Study. Anybody else here for the first time? Well, welcome. Name, can you, what's your name? Excellent. Everybody give him a welcome. Let's got a welcome there. Hi. Anybody else here for the first time? I'm going to front you right out. Okay, no, Cloudy, you've been here before. <laughs> and Dale's been here before, and Cheryl's been here before, but hi, how y'all doing? I don't know if that was my phone or somebody else's. Hey, uh, Thursday night I went to a bike night. And they were playing blues. And I was, I was thinking very seriously <laughs> about getting up there and trying to do something. Because they, they even played a couple that I really liked. Call it Stormy Monday. Tuesday is just as bad. Call it Stormy Monday. Lord knows Tuesday is just as bad. At least I've heard that. Wednesday is the worst. Thursday is oh so sad. Eagle flies on Friday. Saturday I go out and play. Yeah, I do that. Eagle flies on Friday. Saturday I go out and play. Sunday I go to church, I get down on my knees and pray, you know what I, I got to say on Sunday, thank you Jesus for all you've done for me, I said thank you Jesus. life on 
cowboy. So all mankind could be free. You know, that's really something else. You know, that's, that's really a big deal. Call it Stormy Monday, Lord knows Tuesday is just as bad. Call it Stormy Monday, Tuesday is just as bad. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Arnold. I said, Jesus is a rock and a Lord and roll my blues away. I said, Jesus is a rock and a Lord and rolls my blues away. Jesus is going to see you through. Because Jesus is a rock and Lord, he rolled my blues away. Yeah. I said, Jesus is a rock and Lord, he rolls my blues away. Jesus and the Roca, the Roca, the Roca, 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 well, Jesus is right, he rolls my blues away. bad boy out here. All right. Well, I got to warn you all, I have no lame jokes. Not a one. Not a joke today. Uh, anyways, so let me ask you all to do me a solid dough, and if you have your cell phones, if you could do me a favor and just put them on vibrate or silent, that would be wonderful. And then secondly, I think what I want to talk to you all about is first where this message came from, right? So November 11th, what happens on November 11th every year? It's Veterans Day, right? So, you know, I sit here thinking, well... You know, um, I'm, uh, well, first, for those that are new, disclaimer, I'm not a pastor, okay? I'm, I'm, I might be a teacher at best, but I'm not a pastor, okay? Um, I, I fill in for Frankie every now and again when he needs to take a break, and uh, this is one of those times. So that's my disclaimer, and uh, I'm, I'm certainly not a theologian, but 
the one thing that I can always lean on is how God's worked in my life and how he's influenced things. And uh, I've been gifted with a talent to sit there and, and take some, some worldly stuff that I've been through or at least can really relate with and tie that into a message and hopefully maybe inspire you um, into action somehow, some way. That is my main motivation. When I, when I have time up here, First, my main, main motivation is not to waste your time, right? If you're going to take an hour or, and, and change out of your day to come to Redemption Community Biker Church, I can promise you I'm going to do everything humanly possible not to waste your time because my time is valuable as your time is valuable, and I don't want to waste anybody's time, okay? And then with that, you know, it's just one of those things that when, when I'm up here, I, I think really the, the big thing is, is I am part of the church leadership, right? And leadership uh, and the definition of leadership is to motivate somebody to do something that maybe sometimes they may not otherwise have, have done, right? So I have an, uh, you know, roughly 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes up here to try to inspire you into action, okay? And today with um, Veterans Day, uh, you know, right around the corner, you know, that was something that I, I had a couple people identify, and it's amazing when you start to prepare a lesson plan, and um, you have one thought, but then as you start to read the Bible, and you start to do your research, and you start to pull this message together, you know, God starts to reveal other things to you, and it's so much better than what your initial plans were, so I'm, I'm really excited to share this, this message with you, okay, or this teaching. So without any further ado, we're going to talk about five things right, right from Jump Street, right? Five things that you would find um, in the Bible and five things that you would find on the battlefield, okay? And five things that you would find in everyday life, okay? You just got to look for it, right? And sometimes I think our minds aren't conditioned to receive certain things in our day-to-day -day lives, right? But if we stay plugged in and we stay in tune with the download from, from God on a daily, I think that helps us start to identify certain things that maybe we may not have otherwise picked up. You know, that old saying, I was once blind and now I, I see, right? And um, so the five things that I want to talk to you about um, you know, again, you can you can experience this in your day to day. You just have to be, you know, looking for it. Uh, but it's it's definitely called out in the Bible, and it's certainly prevalent on the battlefield. Okay, so with that said, the first thing I want to talk about is intestinal fortitude. Right. So, what is intestinal fortitude? We don't have to we don't have to yell it out, right? But I remember the very first time. I heard intestinal fortitude was when I was in the Army. And an officer said something about, you have to have intestinal fortitude, man. You can't just quit. I said, I have no idea what an intestinal fortitude is, but I'm not quitting, right? And uh, I, I went and I looked it up. But really what intestinal fortitude means is, is courage, right? Courage to keep going when things aren't going as planned. Intestinal fortitude is that when you keep going and everything's falling apart around you. Intestinal fortitude is that thing that keeps you going when your legs are hurting, you don't have oxygen in your lungs, you know, and, and you everything humanly is telling you to quit, but there's something that's telling you, I can't quit. I have to press on. I have to keep going, right? So that's what intestinal fortitude is, all right? The second thing um, that I want to talk to you about is selfless service, right? Selfless service is one of those things where you do something with absolutely zero expectation of receiving something in return, right? You're doing it because that's what God wants you to do. You're doing it because that's what you're upbringing taught you to do, right? You don't do it for recognition. You don't do it for monetary. You don't do it for, you know, any uh, uh, likes on Facebook. You don't do it, but to do it because it's just simply the right thing to do, right? 
bravery. You know, <laughs> when I wrote this out, bravery, I was like, man, you know, like we, I think everybody here can, can sit here and, and think of something brave. And, you know, I kind of mentioned in my announcements, man, some things get watered down over time, right? And I swear, I remember I heard somebody, it was, it was like, and not to get all, you know, down, down a rabbit hole, but we go down rabbit holes in RCBC, right? Sometimes we, we just go head first into them, right? But there, there was this thing where somebody had come out, like, and, and revealed their gender of, of whatever, right? And they're like, oh, that person was so brave. It's like, what? Brave? I'm, <laughs> Jesus getting out to the cross, that was brave, Right? Um, Moses going and talking to Pharaoh, man. I mean, he had the big guy his back, right? Or, or big guy had his back, but nonetheless, that that was brave. Going into combat and and engaging with the enemy face to face, hand to hand, house to house. That's bravery, right? We can't let certain things get watered down over time. So I did think that it was worth bringing that up, not to go too far down that rabbit hole. But, you know, bravery, let's call bravery for what bravery is, man. Let's not water it down with some, some touchy-feely stuff, right? Sacrifice. That's another one, right? And I think we've talked about this before. I think Frankie had talked about it before. He's like, oh, he had to sacrifice fly ball. Ain't the kind of sacrifice I'm talking about, man. Again, Jesus getting nailed on a cross to sacrifice, right? Giving up everything that you love and hold dearly um, on, on a gamble for something that you believe in, right? Knowing that it could cost up to your life, right? We talked about the forefathers in one of my teachings before, right? When they penned the Declaration of Independence, right? They knew once they signed the Declaration of Independence, that was their death warrant, man, right? That is sacrifice. And then finally, valor. I got so excited, I didn't click my slides, man, but that's okay, y'all getting it. Valor, right? What, what, what is valor? I think one of the big things that jumps out at us uh, in a day-to-day -day on TV is you see some pretty... Um, Amazing stuff uh, by just everyday citizens. Uh, there was just uh, not too long ago, there was this YouTube video that popped out, went viral. It was a uh, former Marine, because uh, there is no such thing as an ex-Marine, right, Chris? Yeah. yeah. So there was this Marine, he's in this uh, Jiffy store or whatever. He's got a Gatorade and, and a couple other drinks in his hand. And he's talking to a cashier, and he's actually just getting ready to turn and leave. And three thugs walk in, and one dude points a piece at him, right? And this dude doesn't even hesitate, man. He, and, and I watched the interview. He didn't even know that the bag was still affixed to him. And he punched him, but then the bag kind of did the second go around and, and clocked the person. Uh, it, but it was just so instinctive for him, right? It was just something in his, whether it was training or just something in his inner being, told him that was the right thing to do. And that was valor, Right. Um, police, uh, you know, they, and, and firefighters, you know, when you see a car wreck and, you know, it's on fire and they go in there and pull this person out, you know, and it's just, you know, uh, facing down a gunman or talking somebody off of a, uh, off of a suicide, right? Like suicide by cop, you know, and, and instead of doing the, the easy, you know, Piece where they had every reason to sit there and engage and kill this person, they, they chose not to, and they, they, they de-escalated the situation and, and saved that person's life, right? To me, that's, that's valor, right? And then the battlefield, you know, there's so many different examples, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, in, in this message today is, is valor on the battlefield, right? But valor, um, I think, with... That, that comes from uh, uh, spiritual and Christianity and uh, Christian beliefs, okay? So that's kind of where we're going to go with this message today. And like I said, man, I started off with this one thought of doing something, and um, 
you know, uh, God kind of put it on my heart to take it in a different direction, right? But, you, you know, so, so we talked about all those, those different examples, right? And then if you look in the Bible, man, in the Bible, there's, there's examples of valor and courage all throughout the Bible, right? You got Moses, right? Um, Moses, you know, faces insecurities and fears by responding uh, to God's call. What was Moses' insecurities and fears, man? He was he was he was slow to speak, right? He wasn't he didn't feel like he was quick witted. And he's like, you know, but God said, Don't worry about it, I got you. Motivated Moses, uh, so motivated by God's vision of him helping to save people, and his bravery inspired the Jews to follow his example. The second example is David. Courage to face impossible situations, right? And situations, that's plural, man. It wasn't just like Goliath and, and he was done his, his trials and tribulations, right? He was a great warrior on the battlefield too, right? It says, had the courage to go to battle with a giant, check, steadfast confidence, believed that God would protect him like many times before, his act of faith influenced a whole army uh, to join his side and was victorious with God on his side, right? And that, that old saying, if God is with us, who can be against us, right? Then you have Esther, courage to take a big risk. You know, she risked her life to save the Jews from being annihilated by Jewish law, right? She was able to sit there and, and muster that courage to talk to who? Who'd she talk to? The king. Who was the king? Right. Her husband. Motivated by, by believing God's plan for her to save many people's lives. Prayed and fasted to put her trust in God so that she could have the courage to stand up to her husband to protect her people was an example to her whole country because of her faithful sacrifice. And then lastly, you have Daniel, right? Courage to not give in. And, and you know, Daniel was actually uh, the, the person I was going to start to really, like, hone in on, right? Daniel was a tough guy, man. Never gave up praying to God only, to God only, even when people threaten him otherwise. Think about that, man. And I have, a, I have a, um, an asterisk next to this next bullet, right? Shows gratitude of God over fear of people. Shows gratitude of God over fear of people. What does that mean? Man, we, we could really spend a lot of time. We could certainly jump down a rabbit hole on this one, right? Because how many times, and I, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm guilty of this, man, is, you know, if I'm at the house or I'm by myself or I'm in certain company and, and I'm getting bolder as I get older, right? But there's there's been times where I'm sitting around a group of people and I, I've, I'm wanting to pray for my food, I'm wanting to pray for everybody's food. I'm wanting to, to bless it, right? And, and I don't. And that might seem kind of trivial, right? And I, I still pray for mine, but I don't pray for everybody's food, right, uh, in, in certain circumstances. And I was thinking about this. It's like how many other times have I compromised what God's put on my heart out of fear of people versus pleasing what, doing what's pleasing to God? Right? Had, okay, so moving on. Bullet number three. Had deep God confidence or prayed constantly throughout the day, even though it was against the law. Right? He was an outlaw. Right? <laughs> think about it. Think about Christians back in the day. Right? Think about Christians. The, uh, think about Jesus, right, of going out there with his message. It was anti-establishment to the max, right? I thought that was pretty interesting, man. So 
Who knows this guy? Anybody? Anybody? Who? Anybody else think that's somebody different? Who knows who Sergeant York is? Sergeant York. Really? This is awesome then. I was waiting for a whole bunch of hands to go up. So this is going to be this is going to be good on a couple different levels, right? So Sergeant York was a doughboy, right? Sergeant York fought in World War 1. Okay? Sergeant Alvin C. York, right? Uh, his, his nickname, I, I got it up here, right? And so his nickname was Sergeant York. I mean, once a sergeant, always a sergeant, especially if you um, are a popular guy like him, right? He was uh, born on December 13th, 1887, uh, Fentress County, Tennessee, died September 2nd, 1964, at the ripe old age of 76, um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Growing up in the 1800s, he was number three of 11 children, okay? He himself had 10 children. He was known to be a bar brawler, and he's also been known to like some alcohol. However, over time, he had a conversion. He was a member of the Church of Christ, and I thought that was pretty cool. Where's Drifter at? Drifter? Church of Christ, man. He went to Church of Christ as well. So just want to call that out to you, bro. All right. So anyways, uh, and so he had a conversion experience, and that's how they, they quoted it in his write-up uh, on January 1st. I thought that was kind of interesting. That was the New Year's um, uh, revelation, right? Uh, but he did his conversion uh, January 1st, 1915, and he dove headfirst into his his faith, right? And he studied, and he really became strong in the Word. And um, in 1917, he, at the ripe old age of 29, the, the cutoff was 30, right? But at 29 years of age, um, he was drafted to serve during World War I. But there's a problem with that. He, his church... This specific section of the church uh, believed in pacifism, right? So he's a pacifist, right? Pacifism, right? And he's like, hey, this this isn't going to jive with with my enlistment in the army, man. He said, I can't go overseas and, and uh, you know, kill. And... Um, <laughs> Kind of had a problem, but he he submitted and he became a conscientious conscientious objector, right? And it got denied and said, "Hey, you're still going to come into the military. You're still going to serve in the army." So, Sergeant or at the time, Private York served in Company G, 328th Infantry, 82nd Division, right? He was deeply troubled by the conflict between his pacifism. And his training for war. He spoke at length with his company commander, a gentleman by the name of Captain Edward Courtney Bullock Danforth from Augusta, Georgia. And he also talked to a gentleman who was his battalion commander by the name of Major G. Edward Buxton. And that gentleman was from Providence, Rhode Island. They were both devout Christians. Biblical, and they also shared, so, so when, when Sergeant York, or at the time Private York, was, was conflicted, right? He's like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the call to serve my country, but then I also have my spiritual beliefs, right? And he was, I, I think, probably conflicted is an understatement, right? Um, and he was, he was just being honest and sincere, but he was talking to his chain of command. He's like, look. I don't think I can do this. And these gentlemen shared Bible passages and verses with him to try to, to make him understand how you can still be a believer in Christ and you can still serve your country, right? 
So it says they shared biblical passages about violence were cited by both officers as they persuaded York to reconsider the morality of his participation in the war. And then after that, they said, look, dude, take 10 days vacation, right? 10 days of leave. And that's probably unheard of, but, you know, they said, take 10 days off, man. Go home. Think about this. Pray on this. Do what you feel like you need to do, right? So, 10 days leave, he visited home, and he returned convinced that God meant for him to fight and would keep him safe, as commit, keep him as safe, and he was as committed to his new mission just as he had been for the pacifism piece, right, and his religion. So, that's pretty interesting, but this this is this is where we start getting into the the meat and potatoes of who really Sergeant York is, right? So, Sergeant York earned he didn't win it he earned it uh, the Medal of Honor, right? So, there was a, a battle in the Argonne Forest, right? And there was a ridge line that had multiple machine guns. I believe it was six machine guns that were uh, laid out along this ridge line. And his um, element, and he wasn't the leader, he was just a, a corporal at the time in that element, and they were charged to go take care of the machine guns on that ridge line. And as they started to move through, the machine guns opened up, instantly killed six people, wounded three. And from that point, and one of the, the persons that was either killed or wounded was the leader of that element. And Sergeant York, Corporal York, had stepped up to the plate and, and took charge of the remaining uh, seven people, right? So he starts to assault by himself these machine guns. And... It's, you, you would have to read what it, what he said, and I didn't want to go go like deep diving in a, like verbatim of his his account of the situation. But he said everything happened so fast; he didn't really even have time to take cover. He was was a, an excellent marksman. He just started taking shots at the enemy every time they would put their heads up to shoot. He would sit there and take one out, take another one out, take another one out. Turns out that he's credited for killing upwards to twenty three German soldiers. Right. And that inspired the rest of his element to, to move, right? And as they're going in to these, these uh, machine gun bunkers and, and trench line, a German officer pulls out his pistol at point-blank range and shoots at him six times. Misses him every single shot. The German officer, no, like... And I don't know if you've ever shot at somebody at very close range, but weird stuff happens, and you can miss somebody that's very close to you, right? Um, that German officer was stunned, and he surrendered. Not just him, but he surrendered his whole company. And as they were bringing these German soldiers back, because the German officer was like, hey, I just shot at this dude six times. He didn't get taken out. They, they just annihilated my machine guns. He didn't know that there was only seven soldiers on the ground, right? He thought it was a far numerically superior force, right? And, and so he, he <laughs> surrenders in the element up there. And then as they're marching these people back, some other Germans surrender. They're like, hey, you know what? These guys surrender. We're going to surrender. Wound up 132 people or 132 German soldiers surrendered to Alvin C. York, this guy who was a pacifist from Tennessee, right? How cool is that? So, you know, Alvin, Sergeant York wound up being one of the most highly decorated or the highly de most decorated soldier of World War I, right? That's pretty cool. In fact, they're, they're, when he was marching them German soldiers back, uh, this uh, General Pershing, I think, when when um, 
it wasn't when they were marching the soldiers back, but when, because he initially got awarded, I believe, the, the Silver Star. And General Pershing said something to the, to the um, fact of, you know, I, I heard you captured the whole entire German army. He's like, no, sir, it was only 132 people, right? So I, I thought that was pretty humorous, you know, and he was very humble, man. He was very humble throughout this whole thing, and, uh, but w it was very inspiring, right? And, you know, he, he alone with his actions inspired, you know, those people to, the, the other American soldiers, the Doughboys, to rise up and, and, and fight as well, right? Uh, especially after seeing nine of their, their fellow soldiers get taken out immediately. So that was, that, that in itself is a pretty cool story, right? Um, but, you know, Sergeant York isn't who I want to talk about. You know who I want to talk about? Who I think there's some other heroes in this story? That's just who I want to talk about. I want to talk about these two guys. I can guarantee nobody's ever heard of these dudes. All right? So on the left, you have Captain Edward Courtney Bullock Danforth Jr., right? That is Private York's company commander. Right, that is the actual picture of him. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, he, uh, after World War One, he actually served in uh, World War Two in Korea, made the rank of Brigadier General. And uh, in his bio, they talk about him and his relationship with Alvin C. York. Now, the gentleman on the right, you guessed it, is his battalion commander, right? So you have Major uh, G. Edward Buxton from Providence, Rhode Island. That, he too was a very successful um, officer, served World War I, II, and retired as the uh, rank of colonel. So why do I wanna talk about these guys, right? Because, let me tell you, um, if you've ever been in a position, especially training up for war, right? And you've been in a position where you have to, and it doesn't have to be war, it, it could be whatever, um, you know, where you're relying on every single person to come through and, and pull their fair share. And for somebody to come up to you as a leader and say, hey, man, um, this whole war thing and killing people, uh, that's, that's just not my jam. This isn't what I'm, I'm here to do. I know what Bobby would have done, and I would not have sat down and read him scripture. I would not have done that, right? I've would been like, you, you, you know, the minute somebody does that, you typically, me, not you, me, uh, and I'm just being real, man, because I've, I've been in similar situations where, you know, everybody else is rising to the occasion, and for some reason you think you're special because of your God? Are you kidding me? You're a coward. You're not worthy to wear this uniform. Go. That's probably where the, the before Christ Bobby would have been. But these guys took a whole entirely different approach. And they, they approached it with Bible in hand, opened it up and said, I understand your concerns. Let's see what scripture says about this. And they sat there and coached, taught, and mentored him. They didn't know he was going to earn the Medal of Honor. They had no earthly clue. In fact, um, when <laughs> and I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to go off script. You know what? Because the script is only as good as, as the paper that it's written on, right? But when they sent him home for them 10 days, the battalion commander said, hey, you know what? When you come back, one of three things is going to happen. You're going to soldier on as an infantry soldier. You're going to be reassigned to a non-combat. Or we're going to discharge you from the service. One of the three. They had no idea that he was going to come back charged up to be an infantry dude. They had no earthly clue that he was going to go over and kill upwards of 23 German officers and capture 123 and earn the Medal of Honor and have a big movie that got produced and helped 
boost the morale as America was ramping up to fight in World War II? They had no earthly clue of that. That's pretty cool. These guys, to me, are heroes as well. Because, again, man, you could have sat there and um, really went, went about it in a, in a worldly way. Uh, and that would have denied the, di the certain things that were set in motion, right? And the pretty cool thing about this is... Um, just talk a little bit about these guys, right? Uh, pretty good looking dude, right? Um, you know, I think that would be the, the typical uh, appearance of an army officer, right? Not stereotype people. But, uh, you know, he was, again, born in Augusta, Georgia. He got his undergraduate from Harvard University, got a scholarship, uh, went to Harvard. He was a company commander of the 82nd Division, which actually became Cloudy, the 82nd Airborne Division eventually. Um, he served from 1917 to 1919, the same unit Sergeant Alvin York was in. Uh, he, once World War I was over with, he went and was selling mutual benefit uh, life insurance, right? And then World War II got spun up and he got called back and he became a supply officer at Fort Jackson. Uh, he was assistant executive um, in, in uh, the Columbia, South Carolina district. And um, once he closed out that, he also wound up going to uh, the command and general uh, staff school in 1942. And he had a very successful career. And as I said, um, he rose to the rank of Brigadier General. That's a one-star general. He retired in 1954, and one of his decorations also included the Silver Star, right? Pretty cool story with this guy, right? And then Major Edward Buxton. So the, the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about this dude is down at the very bottom of this write-up talks about a quote from, from Sergeant York. Um, well, it, he goes on to say, let's see here, that's what I get for going off script. After the, this, the discussion with, with um, Sergeant York, Buxton allowed York a 10-day pass to go home to the mountains of Tennessee in order to sort out his feelings. Upon his return, Major Buxton was ready to give York his discharge or reassign him as a noncombatant if he still espoused concerns. In the end, however, York returned refreshed and ready to engage the Germans, reassured by his faith in God. York confided years later about Buxton. And this is a quote. He was the first New Englander I ever knowed. I was kind of surprised at his knowledge of the Bible. It made me happy to know my battalion commander was familiar with the word of God. That's pretty cool. You know, and I, I know you all had to been in a situation at one time or another in your, in your lives where you didn't know other people from from Adam, right? And you didn't know if they were believers or non-believers. You were just put into a situation. It could be at the doctor's office. It could be at the town hall. It could be wherever. And the minute that somebody mentions God or you know, you get that understanding that, hey, man, this person's on the same sheet of music that I'm on, and they're believers in Christ. There's a certain easiness that comes over you. Am I, am I right? I, I mean, that happens to me, right? It's like, okay, I think we have at least some mutual understanding, right? And, you know, when I was talking to Jen today about this whole, whole message, it's like, you know, the, the majority of people that come here to church, we, we already know God, right? For the most part, I think everybody in here at, at some level, um, may, maybe there's, there's a few in here that don't, but 
I think the general audience, there, everyone already has a relationship, man. And the way I'm looking at this is this message, again, when I started it off, I said, I want to try to inspire y'all into action, right? And you don't have to be Sergeant York, man. You don't have to go take out 23 Germans. You don't have to capture 132 of them, right? You don't have to, you don't have to do that, man. But you can be that person. You can be the company commander. You can be that battalion commander. You can be that person that speaks into somebody's life, right? Instead of approaching something in a worldly way, you open up your Bible and say, okay, this is this is what Bobby's thinking. Let's see what the let's see what scripture's saying. And do a deep dive into that and and approach it into in a in a biblical and spiritual manner, right? And that I think is the the message today is my objective today was to tell you to put that humanistic side or humanistic piece aside and it's so instinctive for us right because we can be selfish how dare you not want to step up to the plate and help x y or z right and approach it in a godly and a spiritual way and here's the deal i just want to ask you because we have a couple minutes left uh jen are there any prayer requests okay so i got two questions that i want to ask you Is there a Sergeant York in your life, right? Is there somebody that you work with daily that you can inspire spiritually, biblically, not worldly, right? The second thing that I want to ask you is, are you Sergeant York? And what do I mean by that? What, what do I mean by are you Sergeant York, right? Because Sergeant York was a believer, man. He was a believer, but also Sergeant York was conflicted. There's so much worldly stuff out there in our day-to-day -day lives that just conflict with our biblical beliefs. Is there or is there not? Think about it, man. I mean, you could just, you could just run the gamut, man. And, and some things are a little more cut and dry than others. But there's Christians out there that are conflicted with a lot of things. I, I, I am convicted or conflicted. I'm convicted and conflicted, man. Woo. But, you, you know, when you sit there and you think, and, and I'm, let me just throw it out there, abortion. Right? Where are we at on that? How many people do you know that are Christians and not just abortion, but man, there's so many other things out there that it's like, how can you be a Christian and do X? And I know people say that to me, and I know people say that about this church. I've seen it. How can you call yourself a Christian in another church and, and come here and do what you do the way you do it? Burnouts on the floor and, <laughs> right? Amen, right? Burn rubber, not souls. But, you, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, are, are we Sergeant York, right? What things are we conflicted with? And do we have somebody that we can reach out to as a company commander did or the battalion commander did and sit there and speak and have them recalibrate you, right? That is what I want to talk to you all about, all right? And lastly, it's kind of interesting, man is, you know, I was sitting here and I was talking to somebody else and, and you know, when, when um, you know, trying to sit here and think about who's going to preach and it, it, make a long story short, um, 2 Timothy 4.2 came into the discussion, right? 2 Timothy 4.2 says this, preach the word be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience in teaching. Reprove. Reprove means censure, to give a butt chewing to, to let somebody know, hey, that path you're on isn't right. 
Rebuke, I think we all know what rebuke means, and exhort. So when we're talking about in season and out of season, it's, it's, it's the same thing that I talked about before about, you, you know, I, I, I used the analogy of a weapon, right? We know that this is our sword, right? In the military, Alvin C. York, I can guarantee, carried his rifle every single place he went. Because when you need that rifle, you need it. You don't have time to go back and get, well, hold on, German. Hold on. Let me go get my rifle and come back, and then I'll fight you. You have to be equipped in season and as season. You got to be equipped at a moment's notice to sit there and bring the fight to the enemy, right? And the enemy, there is a spiritual battle going on, right? And we have to be equipped in season and out of season. We have to know this, right? And then what it says at the very end, it says, with complete patience and teaching. We have to be patient. I kind of talked about this the last time was we can't sit here and just blast somebody. We have to listen and we have to have patience. We have to understand where they're coming from because if we just blast them, we're shutting them down, right? We have to listen. And once we listen, then we start to understand. And once we understand, we can start to teach, right? Because we've approached that in a godly manner versus a worldly manner. So, Jen, you want to come up? So, with with that, I, I leave you, and I hope that um, I can inspire you guys and gals into action in some form or fashion. And, um, you know, I... I do use a lot of military, I I think, um, parallels. It's something I did for 21 years. It's very instinctive to me. But I also think that the the warfare um, parallels are very uh, timely. And I'm not talking about, you know, insurrection and, and, and all that other jazz. What I'm talking about is that spiritual battlefield that we know that's going on when you walk outside that door, right? And how we're going to approach certain things. So with that, Jen, come on up. Please. What's that? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, we do have a a mic back there, but yeah. I'm sorry. Good evening, church. Awesome message. (laughs) Awesome message. That was so good. So we have a lot of prayer requests in a lot of different areas. So we're just going to gather our faith together. If you didn't write down a a prayer request and you have something in your heart, just lift it up to the Lord and we're going to ask him for his favor and his blessing. All right. Father God, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, and we are praying for healing God. We have many members and family members that need healing tonight, Lord. So we're praying for Ron, who's had bypass surgery. We're praying for complete and total healing. We're praying for T uh, with back surgery, Lord. We're praying for complete and a total healing. We're continuing to pray for Christine's brother, uh, for healing of these seizures, and for his brain to be perfect and right in Jesus' name. Continue to pray for healing over my brother with leukemia in Jesus' name, that he would be healed. We're also lifting up those who are battling uh, emotional and mental issues, God. We pray for complete healing um, and alignment in their mind for that. In Jesus' name, Father, we are praying for um, those who are battling, Lord, with loss, who are dealing with uh, finances, uh, those who are looking for work, looking for jobs. God, we pray for provision. We pray for open doors. We pray for wisdom and for breakthrough in all those areas of need. And Father God, we're coming to you with many requests for prayer. Lord, uh, for those who are in recovery, Lord, who are battling addictions, God, we thank you, God, for their courage, for their steadfast determination. We ask you, Lord, to meet them right where they're at, to carry them through uh, this. And we're praying for total and a complete recovery. God, we pray for the peace of God, the power of God, and the supernatural strength to... um, be steadfast to be strong and and come to a complete and total healing we thank you that you will do that 
and bring recovery in their life. Lord God, we thank you for that. We pray for our pastor. We pray that he be safe, that you would dispatch the angels to protect him, that you would bring him back to us refreshed um, with a brand new um, view on, on what his purpose is planned, everything that you have created. Um, pastor Frankie Ford, God, we pray for your perfect will to be done in his life. And I'm going to follow with um, Bobby's Second Peter, Second Timothy, and give an exhortation. So I'm just going to pray this over you. It's, it's from the book of Colossians. The body of Christ, RCBC, devote yourselves to prayer. Be watchful and thankful and pray for God to open the door for the gospel message so that every believer would proclaim the mystery of Christ boldly. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace and seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. And whatever you do, whether it be in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, all right. Well, hey. Um, that concludes our service. We're glad you all came. Uh, I think we still have some uh, coffee out there. But I appreciate you all. Love you. Be safe. We'll see you all maybe for Bible study. If not, next time, uh, next Saturday, same bad time, same bad station. Love you all. Have a good night. Woo!